In this video series, I will talk about how to make personal wedding flowers with silk flowers, including boutonnieres, aka buttonholes, and corsages. I will share with you techniques and tricks that I've picked up over the years and also talk about things that many DIY brides have overlooked when making their wedding flowers. By the end of this series, you will be equipped with the technical know-how to make wedding flowers for your bridal party and family members. It would not only be a beautiful way to honour your loved ones on your wedding day, but also can save you quite a bit of money from ordering fresh flowers from your local florist. Hello, my name is Janet. Welcome to my channel. This is where I talk about silk flowers and weddings. I'm excited to help you work with both flowers and create memorable moments. This is part one of my personal wedding flower series. I'm doing it as a series because many of the techniques used are shared for making boutonnieres, corsages and other wearables. In this video, I will focus on things that you need to consider before making the personal flowers. There are no set rules for what you can use for making boutonnieres. However, there are a few things that you may want to bear in mind before designing the flowers to avoid disappointment. Number 1. The size Normally, the boutonnieres would sit on the lap hole where the buttonhole is. With the stem stuck inside the buttonhole or lay on the lap hole when the buttonhole is non-existent. You don't want the boutonnier to be so heavy that the whole lapel gets weighed down or the air tails forward hanging off the lapel I can assure you that it wouldn't look nice in the pictures Be sensible with the size of the flowers that you choose according to the size of your man You don't want to put a giant sunflower on a petite man or a teeny weeny rose bud on a guy who wears double XL Number 2. The colours If the boutonniere is for the groom, always use the same material that you have used for the bridal bouquet. It seems obvious, but I've seen so many DIY brides who have been creative and thought, Oh, but my man doesn't like pink, and ordered something gender neutral for the groom and got the pictures <laughs> and the mismatched flowers just look horrible in the pictures but at least for me a perfectionist Virgo <laughs> using the same flowers for the bridal bouquet and the air for the groom is the easiest way to make the flowers match nicely in the photos same goes for the groomsmen if you want the pictures to look great, just give the boys whatever you're giving the girls or just use the colours from the bridal bouquet. That will be the safest way to make your wedding photos look great. And you will want to consider where the flowers will sit on so they won't be lost in the photos. Do you really want to put a lilac corsage on a lilac suit that the mother of the bride is wearing? Trust me, the flowers will look so much better if there's contrast to the background. Number 3. Durability Most wearable personal flowers are either pinned on the chest or worn on the wrist. Obviously, you want the flowers to be durable. You don't want the mother of the groom walking around with a broken corsage on her wrist. I would avoid berries that are made of foam. They are very fragile. Nobody wants half a berry sitting in front of the chest when taking pictures. I would also avoid flowers like caspia, which naturally gives you snowflakes. So make sure you choose materials that are strong enough to be worn. Now you know how to choose your flowers, fillers and leaves wisely for your personal wedding flowers. 
Let me show you how to wire them. Here's the link to the video. Click the link and I will see you over there.